All right, folks, good morning. Thank you for our, your patience as we had a little bit of a change. Over there. So we have Dr. Shilpi Mehta here. Shilpi Bhadra Mehta is a candidate for fellow of the Ocular Nutrition Society, organizer of the Boston Paleo Meetup Group, and practicing doctor of optometry in the Boston area. Her interests include archaeology, anthropology, food, and functional medicine. Dr. Mehta. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're going to zip. This is actually the topic is very broad. Um, it would be two or three hours in a traditional lecture. So we're going to just give you the appetizer version of the subject. So I'm going to talk about nutrition and lifestyle for the eyes, brain, and heart uh, because they're all interconnected. Uh, the big eye diseases are glaucoma, macular degeneration, cataracts, myopia, retinopathy. And just quick show of hands, how many people actually fear going blind over death. So interestingly, when they actually poll Americans, going blind is one of, is the top leading, uh, fe you know, fear of, of, he of, of poor health. Uh, so I, I think it's very important that eye health is very intimate, intimately tied up with the rest of the body's health. The top causes of blindness, according to World Health Organization, are Cataracts, uh, one second. okay, my laser pointer, anyways, cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration, corneal opacities, and diabetic retinopathy. And the cost is enormous. We are, we are spending way too much on a lot of preventable diseases. Um, refractive error is glasses, basically, for correction. Cataracts vision problems, um, retinal disorders we'll get to because diabetes, high blood pressure affect the retina and cause issues there. Glaucoma. Glaucoma is interestingly enough being thought of much more as an inflammatory disease now. Some basic eye anatomy, um, optic nerve, that's where glaucoma hits. Macula, we'll talk about it. Um, when we talk about LASIK, LASIK is actually up here at the cornea, but we're not going to get into that today, but I just wanted to give you an overview. So here's a normal retina. This is a picture of the optic nerve macula right there. This is a diseased retina, diabetes, high blood pressure. You have leaky blood vessels. Diabetes and high blood pressure, any type of cardiovascular disease will cause leaky blood and fragile blood vessels. You have hemorrhaging, you have bleeding in the back of the eye. This can cause permanent blindness. Um, so that's why good, good cardiovascular health is very important uh, because all these diseases will show up in the eye. Uh, myopia. Um, typically, the incidence of myopia has really exponentially risen, particularly in Asian countries. We think there's definitely some lifestyle factors. Uh, Lorraine Cordain has talked about in hunter-gatherer cultures, Percentage of myopia is about 1%. Uh, today, in parts of Asia, it's approaching 50, 60%, um, starting from childhood. And part of it is we were not designed uh, to sit in front of an iPhone or an iPad or a computer for 8, 12 hours a day, uh, 40, 60 hours a week. And I'm not telling people to ditch their iPads, iPhones, laptops. I mean, we live in a modern world, but there are some strategies that can help with that. Um, the interesting correlation is in Israel and in China, they looked at um, the, the less educated you were, the less studying near up close work you, you did, uh, the less the need for glasses. Um, this was done with uh, Orthodox Jews who have to memorize sections of the Bible versus the less Orthodox Jews who did not read as much. In China, the rural population versus the urban population. We know insulin pays, plays a big role, IGF-1. I put a little star there. Um, elevated glucose, um, diabetics actually, high blood sugar will actually change their prescription and their glasses so it makes their prescription stronger. Um, sunlight, vitamin D. Uh, interesting study in Singapore and Australia. Kids who played outside for their exercise, not indoors, actually had less incidence of myopia. It's a correlation, but I definitely think vitamin D is playing a role. We don't know the exact mechanism. But um, if I had to do it over again, I'm wearing contacts, not glasses, so you can't tell. I would have played outside more. Glaucoma, another inflammatory disease. Um, there's definitely some lifestyle issues going on. Um, 
inflammation, particularly normal tension glaucoma. We think of glaucoma as, oh, high pressure in the eye, but there's actually types of glaucoma that are normal pressures, but there's still damage being done to the eye, and it's more and more being seen as an inflammatory process. Sharp drops in blood pressure are not good for the eye because the eye does not get enough oxygen. So low blood pressure is actually not good for glaucoma, neither is high, because low blood pressure, the eye is not getting enough oxygen. Um, severe blood loss in trauma, um, in surgery, that could actually precipitate certain types of glaucoma. Genetics do play a role. It's carried slightly more on the mother's side. Um, there is some new research out there. Uh, magnesium is being used in um, Switzerland to actually uh, has some anti-inflammatory effects and some improvements in glaucoma may, may be occurring there. Um, we think high calcium actually worsens glaucoma. Iron is, uh, is, is not as uh, good, particularly for postmenopausal women and iron excess. Of course, we have one billion people on this planet with anemia, so that's the other end. And I will say anemia is also bad for the eye. You can have, um, you can have hemorrhaging and different types of blood vessel problems in the eye due to anemia. I saw actually two cases of pregnant women with hemorrhaging in the eye due to severe anemia. So um, either, you know, iron, either too little, too much is not good. Um, cataracts, which is basically the lens in the eye, um, thickens with age. When you're born, you're born with a very clear lens. Over time, aging, UV, um, high blood sugar, um, perhaps insufficient vitamin C contributes to cataracts. Um, the Eskimo have almost no rate of cataract, traditional Eskimo, but they also are not exposed to UV. So we have a little confounding variable there. But we do know that diabetics, on average, will get cataracts sooner and more severe than the rest of the population. And I've shown three types of cataracts here. This is a cortical cataract. It looks like a spoke. This here is a nuclear sclerotic cataract. That's the, the one on the left is the most common age-related cataract. When people go for cataract surgery, it's most likely the one on the left. Um, vitamin C, the lens in the eye where a cataract occurs is the highest amount of vitamin C in the whole body. And I actually think as a population, the RDA is very poor. Um, it's a little controversial. We don't really have good clinical trials on vitamin C, quote unquote, preventing cataract. But I think since it's a water soluble vitamin, you, you flush it out, you can't really build toxicity to do it. It's probably a good idea to supplement. Macular degeneration, um, or sometimes known as age-related macular degeneration. I'm going to talk about diet, uh, antioxidants, lutein, zeaxanthin. We're going to talk about macular pigment optical density, the amount of these antioxidants in the, in the macula. Uh, we're going to talk about fish. We're going to talk about leaky gut, a bunch of different things. Um, what you can't control, you can't control your age. You can't control your genes. However, we know that macular degeneration is an epigenetic disease. So it's the, it's the interaction of the environment with the genes. Um, and there's two types, dry and wet. Dry is very slowly progressing, and it's typically treated actually with vitamins and supplements. Wet macular degeneration, there's, um, it's so fragile, the blood vessels break in the eye and leak. And wet macular degeneration is not fun because the conventional treatment is an injection every six weeks in your eye. And I don't know about you, but I would rather eat my fish, eat my green leafy vegetables, eat my antioxidants, than get an injection in my eye every six weeks. Um, and it's also expensive. Um, I'm just going to show you some pictures. This is wet macular degeneration, the really severe form. That would be a 2400, 2200, probably legally blind eye right there. Um, this is the leftover scarring once it dissipates. Uh, this is a normal macula. That's how it should look. And we have different types of scarring. Um, lutein and zeaxanthin. This is courtesy of uh, Dr. Hammond, who get presented at Ocular Nutrition Society. This is his slide. I owe it to him. Um, lutein and zeaxanthin found in green leafy vegetables, and we'll get more into the dietary uh, recommendations. But lutein and zeaxanthin increase chromatic contrast, the ability if you're nighttime driving, the ability to see on a cloudy, snowy, rainy day, whether there's a pedestrian, a bicyclist, who's there in the mirror. Um, it increases visual range, so your actual range increases. It improves glare disability. If you're dealing with headlights, oncoming traffic, the sun, 
this is important. This is not your 2020 eye chart vision, but this is functional vision. How do you function in the real world with, with glare and sun and headlights? And that does improve with the antioxidants. This has been shown. Um, and also visual motor processing speeds because these antioxidants, lutein and zeaxanthin, not only found in the eye, they're found in the brain. All right. The, and now I'm going to, uh, this is a slide courtesy of also Dr. Hammond. The lutein, zeaxanthin are part of the carotenoids family, which is also known as your uh, beta carotene and, and that whole family of antioxidants. So breast milk has way more. So already at birth, some of us have an advantage, some of us don't. So look at formula. In this country, they do not, they do not supplement lutein and zeaxanthin in f infant formula. In Europe, they are doing that. Um, there is a movement to try to add this to infant formula, and I hope that will happen. Um, it's also delivered very early. You see in colostrum, those of you, this is lutein, colostrum, and then mature milk. You can see this graph. This is, again, courtesy of Dr. Hammond. Cognition, lutein and zeaxanthin in the brain, they correlate directly to cognitive function in the elderly. So centenarians, people who live over 100 years old, they have higher levels of lutein and zeaxanthin in their brain, and it correlates with memory retention, verbal fluency, and if you have more of these antioxidants, you have less dementia. So a four-month double-blind, I know everybody loves these randomized control trials, double-blind supplement of DHA formed, you know, get your, basically your fish, plus lutein showed improvement, verbal fluency, and memory. And these antioxidants can actually be measured in the eye, and it increases with supplementation. With food, it's even better. I'm a big supporter of food. Um, here's lutein and zeaxanthin. It's found all over in the brain. Um, and the hypothesis, as Dr. Hammond explained to me, is that it improves the optics of the eye, so not only do you see better, but it also helps with processing in the brain. Now, I wanted to talk about glare. So I don't know if you can see the difference. This is extreme glare. With lutein and zeaxanthin, you get a 47 improvement. That's substantial. So this is going to look a little bit more like that when you're eating right. Um, and that's a really tremendous improvement. And yeah, on the eye chart, you may not improve your prescription. You, might, you may not be able to get rid of your glasses. But I would rather take this vision over that any day. And this worsens with age. This type of visual visual processing is what happens with age. Um, again, this is about, again, improvement with supplementation. If you're at the lowest level of eating these antioxidants to the highest, again, this is the sort of visual difference you're going to see. What to eat? I say to my patients, one to two egg yolks a day, unless you have an egg allergy. A half to one cup minimum greens a day, collards, kale, spinach, Swiss chard, mustard greens, turnip greens, with good quality fat, avocado, cold pressed olive oil, coconut oil, grass fed butter, because it increases the absorption. One pound oily fish with skin on, preferably salmon or three tins of sardines, herring. Um, if you really can't stand fish, lemon flavored, a Norwegian good quality molecularly distilled fish oil about one to two grams per day, combined DHA and EPA. So this is, if you remember nothing else from this lecture today, I want you to remember this slide. Because this is a visual of what you should be eating. This is your one or two egg yolks. These are your green leafy vegetables, and there's your salmon down there. All right, and by the way, I'm sorry, broccoli doesn't count. In a, it doesn't have as high amount of lutein and zeaxanthin as kale, spinach, collards. Um, Lutein and zeaxanthin, this is the supplemental ratio. If, if people really are not going to eat their food, this is what the clinical trials, 10 milligrams lutein to 2 milligrams zeaxanthin, 1 to 5, ratio, uh, five to 1 ratio. Usually in nature, it's about 2 to 1. Um, lutein uh, is more affinity for the rods, which is your peripheral vision. Zeaxanthin is, um, they're actually stereoisomers. Here's a new subject, just came out. Um, very new article in 2013, obesity, lutein me metabolism, and age-related macular degeneration, a web of connections. I don't have time to talk about it, but I just thought I'd mention it. Top foods in lutein and zeaxanthin. Nasartium, which is actually a type of yellow flower similar to like marigolds. Kale, cooked, you have more because per in volume, it, the water comes out. Spinach, turnip, turnip greens, uh, collards, chard. 
egg yolks. This is a big one. Actually, they measured egg versus spinach, lutein. When you test the serum, the blood level, egg yolk is more bioavailable. So I tell people to eat both so you, you get different nutritional profile. Here's the structure. Beta carotene is up there. It does not have the same, it has different benefits, but what I'm talking about today is lutein and zeaxanthin. They're very biochemically similar. Uh, structures affecting bioavailability, so obviously age, body comp, uh, gender, malabsorption. If you have any type of leaky gut or you're on a proton pump inhibitor, one of those antacid drugs, you're gonna, you won't absorb this as well from either food or supplements. If you're smoking, your absorption drops. Any liver or kidney disease, it's going to be harder to absorb. Um, food for thought, and I tell this to my patients. So you can uh, spend time and money cooking and uh, grocery shopping or sitting in waiting rooms in hospitals and in doctor's offices and pharmacies. Uh, you can spend your money on vitamins, minerals, good food, or you can spend it on drugs and surgery. Uh, you can spend money on good quality food, or you can spend it on booze, eating out, cable, whatever. So you, you, we, all, we all have, I know, a budget, but there are definitely some choices you can choose to do with it. Um, you can hike, stretch, walk, lift weights, um, do some ancestral activities, get some sunlight, or you can be in pain. So my summary is eat a variety of real food to optimize nutrition. You need to take supplements as necessary, and I really do think a lot of people do need supplements. Um, I myself do take them. Um, get adequate relaxation, rest, sleep, socialization, sunlight, testing. Um, I would also add spirituality in there. Um, seek health with an integrative health pr provider if uh, Dr. Google doesn't help you. Uh, special thanks to Ocular Nutrition Society, Society's Dr. Stuart Richter, who is a VA Chief of Optometry in Chicago, Dr. Billy Hammond, University of Georgia, Dr. Elizabeth Johnson at Tufts University, Jeff Anschel, who's a, pre a president of Ocular Nutrition Society, um, my husband, a lot, of, uh, a lot of people at this conference, Rob Wolf, Mark Sisson, Chris Kresser, the Jamanes, Dave Asprey, Dr. Deans, Enfield, Kate Chenan, Dallas and Melissa Hartwig, Nora Gaguz, Colin Champ, Diana Sanfilippo, Liz Wolf, Diana Rogers, Michelle and Kurt Norris, Chris Masterjohn, Denise Minger, Dr. Ede, Jimmy Moore, John Durant, Dr. Terry Walls. Here's an interesting one. Jay Jasanoff, who's at the linguistics department at Harvard, he actually let, gave me library privileges to use Harvard University's uh, library both online and offline so I could do a lot of this research. But he's very, been very supportive. I also want to, I didn't get to, I forgot to add on the slide was uh, Matt Lalonde. And that's it.